Yesterday we did our activity, which is due on Monday, but on Monday, this past Monday, we looked at adding forces together that were in more than one dimension. So in other words, multi-force problems, problems in which we draw a free body diagram because there was more than one force, but non-collinear. In other words, in more than one dimension, two dimensions. We had problems something like this. It's Halloween tomorrow night. You get a bag of Halloween candy that has a mass of 10 grams. Somebody pulls it this way. Somebody pulls it this way. Where does it go? What's the net force as a result of those two forces that we pull in the Halloween bag with? Or maybe you got a third person pulling it back this way. What's the net force acting on that Halloween bag now? Does it move? What's the acceleration? This is what we learned to do on Monday. Okay, and in the end, we go through the same basic principles that we went through all of the last couple of weeks. We draw a free body diagram, which is pretty much what we have drawn right now. And then we do the sum of the forces. The problem is that some of the forces aren't as simple for these problems as they were over the ones over the last couple of weeks because these are in two dimensions. In order to do F net is equal to the sum of the forces here, we have to break it up into X and Y components. We still do F net is equal to F1 plus F2 plus F3 plus whatever else, else, whatever else we have there. But we've got to remember when we do this, we have to do X and Y separately from one another as opposed to everything at the same time, like in those other problems. Let's call this number one. Let's call this number two. Let's call this number three. Let's say we got an angle of 30 degrees there. Let's say F1 is 20 newtons. Let's say this is 15 newtons. And let's say this is 25 newtons. Can you tell me what the value of F1 is there for the X component? It's negative 20, because all of it's on the x, the x axis, but it's going to the left. It's going in the negative x direction. Can you tell me what F2 is? Hands, please, for the x component. Brennan? No. Tara? Zero newtons, yeah. Tara, why is it zero? That's right. Horizontally, None of it's there, right? None of it's horizontal. It's all vertical axis. So we're going to say F1 is going to be neg 20 newtons, but we're going to say F2 is equal to 0 newtons because none of it's acting horizontally. F3, well, we don't know its value. It says 25 right here, but we would have to find the X component. And we do that. We're not going to go and actually get the number for it, but you know how we do it, right? This is 25. This is 30 degrees. This is my X side. This is my y side. I'd use cosine to get my x side, and then I'd plug the number in right here. Then I'd do the same thing with the y component. F net is equal to the sum of the forces. Again, F1 plus F2 plus F3. Brendan, what's F1 for the y component? Good. Zero because it's all horizontal. It was neg 20 before. Now it's zero. That's because it was the x-axis that we we're analyzing, now it's the y-axis. So we're going to say 0 plus, what's F2? What's the value of F2 for the y-axis? Reese, what's F2, y-axis? Somebody else have it? Yep, 15 newtons. And F3 is going to be? Well, we'd have to find that, right, using the sine function. Sine 30 is equal to opposite of hypotenuse. Then we plug our number in. But that F3 would be a negative value, right, because it's going down. So we get a total F net. We get a total F net for the Y component. And then we combine them using the Pythagorean theorem and the inverse tan function. So it's not exactly like what we've been doing, but it's a lot like what we've been doing. It's really just a combination of what we've been doing with F net is equal to the sum of the forces along with that stuff that we did back with velocity and displacement vectors, adding them in two dimensions. All right, Mark, a question? Okay, it's okay. We don't need them there. Thanks, though. All right, there are two questions for homework on page 134. Um, we want to do we want to do one or both of these. Anybody have a preference? Number two? Okay, it seems like people are agreeing on number two. Yes? All right. 
Uh, it says two people A and B are dragging a sled on a horizontal icy surface with two light ropes. Person A pulls a force of 30, uh, 65 newtons at 30 degrees. Here's my sled. Here's my 30 degrees. And here's my, we'll call that person A, we'll call that FA is 65.0 newtons. Now person B is pulling at 300 degrees. I think I mentioned on, uh, on Monday what that 300 degrees meant, right? 300 degrees is down here, where we have an angle of 60 degrees below the x-axis. The value of that force is 70 newtons, so it should be drawn a little bit longer than the first one. We'll call that FB. There is no force of friction. They say it's negligible. We're going to find the net force on the sled. So the net force is due to these two forces. We've got to add these up. But it's not as simple as saying it's 65 plus 70 is equal to 135. We have to add them up in x and y components. Before we do that, we've got to figure out what the x and y components of each of these are. So let's draw our little aside over here. We've got 65 newtons. We've got 30 degrees. We've got an x side. We've got a y side. Let's say cosine 30 degrees is equal to x over 65 newtons. What does that equal, guys? 65 cos 30. Someone's got to have that. Bailey? 56.29 newtons. Thank you. Let's do the y component now. Sine 30 degrees is equal to y over 65. y is going to be equal to 32.5. All right, so we've got the x and y for the first one. Let's do the exact same thing for the second one. That's 60 degrees. This is x, this is y, and that's 70 newtons. Let's say cosine 60 degrees is equal to x over 70. x is going to be equal to 35 newtons. Let's say sine 30 degrees, sine 60 degrees, I should say, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. The y component is 70 sine 60, which is 60.621 newtons. All right? Okay, we, we got the preliminary work done, kind of the lead, the lead up work done. Now we got to break it into our x and our y components and do our F net thing, like we've done for two weeks or so. For the X component, let's say F net is equal to F1 plus, uh, sorry, FA, I should say, plus FB. FA for the X component is 56.29 plus 35 newtons. We add those up, we're going to get 91.29 newtons. So the net force for the x component is 91.29 newtons. Now let's do it for the y component. Again, the same thing. For the y component, we're going to say it's 32.5 newtons. For the y component of B, we're going to say it's 60.621. Is that right? No, it's not right. It's close, but it's not right. What's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? Good. 60 is going to be negative. Why is it going to be negative? Yeah, it's going to the right. That makes the x component positive, but it's going down. That makes the y component negative. Now, we add those up. 60.621, negative 60.621 plus 32.5 is going to give me, what is that, 28 point, negative 28.121. Is that right? Is that right? You have 25? Uh, I think it's 28. I think it's 28. Yeah. All right, so we've got, we've got our x component here, and we've got our y component. These are our two important numbers now. 
Let's combine them. 91.9, uh, 91.29, I should say. And then we've got 28.121. We're going to find the magnitude of this force by doing the Pythagorean theorem, and we're going to find the angle using the inverse tan function. And when we do, we get 95.5 .9, newtons, and the angle here would be 17 degrees. How many people got that? They say 343. Don't worry about that notation, okay? Just, you get 17 degrees, you're, all, you're good to go. Yes? All right, I want to take a look at another example. This time it's in your notes, so you're going to have to copy this one out, unfortunately. Give you a second to do that, and then we'll take a look at the question itself. Okay, let's take a look at it now. It says a 20-kilogram wagon is being pulled to the right with a force of 100 newtons at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. There's a 50-newton force of friction acting on the wagon. It's the acceleration of the wagon. That doesn't sound too hard. Here's the wagon. It's being pulled this way at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal, and that force is 100 newtons. We'll call that FA. FA is 100 newtons. There's a force of friction acting at 50 newtons. Can you tell me which way that acts? Yep. Acts at which way? To the left, yes. And its value is 50 newtons, so it's the length of that arrow should be about half as long as the other one. We'll call that FF and it's 50.0 newtons. Now, there are two other forces, right? What are the two other forces that normally cancel out here? Gravity, Gravity and the normal force. So let's draw them in <coughs> like this. Force of gravity is acting down. The normal force is acting up with the same value as gravity, right? And then they cancel each other out, right? No, they do not. They don't cancel each other out this time. Now, here's why. Gravity must be bigger than the normal force in this case. But didn't we say if gravity is bigger than the normal force, then it would fall down, it would move downwards? It's like, well, yeah, if, if the downward force is bigger than the upward force, it moves downward, right? If up is bigger than down, it moves upwards. Well, here we've got downward force bigger than the upward force. It should move down, but it's not. The wagon doesn't fall down into the ground. It doesn't fall through the through the pavement, down into the earth. Josh, I saw your hand up a second ago. What's the deal with that? What's that upward force that's already acting? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's the Y component of FA. So the reality is, we'll call that the Y component here. The reality is that FG is equal to Fn plus the y component of the applied force. Now, they still cancel out, but it's three of them that cancel this time. The y component of the 100 newtons, the normal force, and the force of gravity, the three of those combined cancel out this time. So what am I left with? Well, gravity's gone because it's canceled, the normal force is gone, and the y component of the applied force is gone. So what do I care about now? What am I left with? Friction and the x component of the applied force. So what we need to do right now is get the x component of that applied force. It's the adjacent side of the triangle, so let's say cosine 30 degrees is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. That's going to equal 86.6 newtons. 86.65, I think it is. 6025. Okay, thank you. If we stop and think about this for a second, that should make sense to us anyways, right? You're pulling a wagon. Does the wagon move up or down? No, it moves horizontally. You're pulling at an angle, but it still moves horizontally. Well, what force do I care about? 
If it's moving horizontally, I care about the force that acts horizontal. So of course I'm going to want the x component. This is just why I want the x component. I want only the x component here because the y component, along with the normal force, has canceled it with gravity. The y component and the normal force added up give me the value of the force of gravity. All right, now let's do the net force is equal to the sum of the forces. This is what we've done 100 times before. FF plus, well, I'm not going to say FA, because I don't want to put in the 100 newtons there. I want to say FX, the x component of that 100 newtons. M times A is equal to FF plus FX. The mass here is going to be 20 kilograms. We're looking for the acceleration. FF is negative 50, and FX is positive 86. 0.6025. We add those up, we get 36.6025 divided by 20 gives me 36.6025. What is it? 1.83 meters per second squared. So this is kind of like those problems that we were doing for the last two weeks, in the sense that we're just doing F net is equal to the sum of the forces. We don't need to worry about breaking it down into x's and y's. But it's kind of like the problems that we did Monday and earlier today, where we do have to worry about funny angles. Okay, in this case, we're kind of doing an x and a y. Here's the x for sure. But the y component we just can ignore, because in the end, all the y's end up canceling each other out. It's kind of a hybrid question. It's what we did over the last two weeks combined with what we did on Monday and earlier today. Make sense? Now, here's a little question for you. Here's a little bonus example question for you. What if you hadn't have been given the 50 newtons? What if you hadn't given what if you had been given the coefficient of friction? What if we had said the coefficient of friction was 0 0.90 instead of the force of friction. Okay, we're not going to actually solve this, but how would you find the force of friction there? What's the equation for the force of friction? Mu times Fn, right? What's the value of Fn? 20 times 9.81? Usually is, but not this time. It's usually 20 times 9.81 because the normal force usually cancels gravity. But in this case, gravity, which is 20 times 9.81, is equal to the normal force, which we'd be trying to find there, plus the y component of the applied force, which would be 50 newtons. So it would be 20 times 9.81 is equal to Fn plus 50. Rearrange the salt for Fn and then plug it in over here to get the force of friction. That's a bit of a challenge question, though, right? What we just did a few minutes ago, okay, that's, that's good enough, and that's fair enough to ask you here. Okay? Adding the coefficient of friction there makes it definitely makes it a more challenging question here. Because okay? you've got to remember that that normal force is not m times g this time. All right? I'm going to have you work on, actually, before I do this example, I'm going to have you work on a couple of questions on that worksheet that I gave you last week. Uh, let's do the last two questions, please. Worksheet, um, friction worksheet, question number 16 and 17, please. <laughs> 